I'm going to my right uh, And um, so put me for a second. So I'm going to uh, put up some slides. And at that point, I'm going to, to praise, I'm going to take down the slides and have my colleague, you know, um, share two movies. Um, and then we will um, go back to the slide deck. So I have a lot of really great information to share today. I hope everybody can see the shining quick interpreters and capsule. If you're free to put it in the chat, if you have any other access needs, you want to make sure that you're able to participate. Um, can you see this? Let me adjust my settings. Um, I see the, the chat and her shot did not see the interpreter. So I hope you can see the interpreter now at the clip of spelling. Um, I'll elevate him to panelists to make sure he could see anyone else should just email me if they have issues. And that's the uh, ongoing challenge with um, technology. We always, we always have to be flexible just to make sure that we don't lose anybody. So thank you, everybody, for your patience. So first, um, I would love to share with you um, the incredible team here at the Mia's Office of People with Disabilities. This is a picture from um, Saturday's Disability Pride Parade, which was back after a two-year break. And um, here, this picture, which was taken in front of the you know, Washington Library, you see a row um, several um, PD staff members who are wearing black t-shirts with the MAPD logo, which is the square in that line to Chicago Blue with the red star and then the words MOPD and then our donor says me as office for people with disabilities and we see some um, future MOPD employees like um, our colleague Ear Drews, um, Sun Sam, uh, Christina Stata, um, Charlotte Drew, and Kavis will come for my job someday. <laughs> which is great, we always want to build the next generation. And I know that many people are this um, meaningful at the Disability Prime Parade. And I think that the anniversary is such an important time for us to gather and be with each other. And I know that we are, it was just nice to see each other after um, not being able to gather for the parade. And then um, it's never easy to play at the parade, so I'm going to, um, Think the Korean um, community for uh, their work and bringing everything together is obvious. You know, the um, pretty work um, with the Korean community to make sure that they can have the different programs in engagement. So, when um, I was as an equipped quality attorney, I was um, actively bound to that too. So, it was a privilege to be able to support the Korean and help um, the community navigate this in a process. So I'm so glad they never did really came together and the weather was not too hot, which um, is a misty Pacific, uh, this group of women that we seem to have. Um, so I also want to share about another event we had on May 19. This is a brand new event here at the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities in Honor and Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Here yeah, we had this in our um, location at the west side, the Honor into and encourage um, our continued work on global accessibility, digital accessibility, but also bring the community together. So we had um, an exhibit of uh, booms, we had um, a vaccine clinic, we had an opportunity to test out the scooter. We had, which I think may be um, everybody's favorite, is the food trucks. Everybody loves a good lunch. 
range there would be well, there was labor law, another department here of the business of the consumer protection, which Robert frankly is there, food trucks, if you work, there's labor them to uh, make those invitation to have um, food trucks available. Um, and then we also had a point as a CTE coming, they brought on um, a CTE bus so the people could um, see the different accessibility features. And the CTE new accessibility coordinator, Irma, was also there. And uh, she's, new, she's new to the CTE series, but then she got to meet so many people. And if you haven't met her yet, I might suggest you do so. So she also picked, we also had a teaching on accessibility piano. So this is um, Evelyn Pionian, who is a librarian. Um, she had here in class and she was talking about the experience, what it takes to uh, make the internet accessible for people who are tough and hard of hearing. We also had um, two people who uh, have intellectual development with disabilities who uh, um, shared about their experiences. Um, we also had a Peter so um, that was um, Ned and Adia, who were some of my favorite advocates of and, um, accessibility for people and intellectual to other parental disabilities. And then we also have Peter Burke from PYZ, who I think many of us know, so, which is an honor to facilitate this program. And of course, uh, me and they me, um, she came and um, she was really able to, it was, we threw us this in commitment to this work. In here, so I am standing next to the mayor. This is um, Mayor J. Grote, who works in diversity of Walgreens. Um, so this deep and then I was also joined by uh, my fellow commissioner, so Ian Hanke, who is the commissioner of the Department of um, Cultural Affairs and Special Events, Gia Biagi, who is the commissioner for uh, the Chicago Department of Transportation, and the Brianti Kanasi, who is the commissioner for the Department of Family and Support Services, who I'm a pretty sure this space one, and this is just a snapshot of the full house that we had, including a whole group of students from Chicago at high school. And uh, many of these students are pictured here too. Um, so I would love to talk about, uh, so that's just a little bit of some of the in-person events we've been able to have this summer. So I would love to share with you that we have updated our mission statement here, which is an MMPD, which is the faster accessibility for participation and equal, equal opportunities for people with disabilities in all aspects of life through a variety of ways, including systemic change, information and referral, education and training, public policy, and drug services. It be our uh, work to make sure that disabilities represent and in our city services program initiatives and policy. And every day we work to make Chicago the most accessible city in the nation. Um, so this is about me, um, I, and I know that we are now um, up to um, over 100 participants. I think some of you I mean know very well, others um, might be new to you. So I really love to um, take a few minutes to share who I am. So um, in July 2020, Mayor Nathan appointed me to be commissioner of the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. And um, in doing this, um, I became the first damn commissioner of the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities. It's the first damn person to become a commissioner of any Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities nationwide. We have a number of large cities, Lanham, MRPDs, yeah, about, about the country, but I was the first that person to step into this room. And I feel that this possibility of being first, you know, I could really um, open up those pathways for more people with disabilities. When I run, I do not want to be the last. And that's really important to me. Um, so before I was an MPD, I was a staff attorney and equipped for equality, working as a disability civil rights attorney. So I worked on um, employment discrimination cases, including helping people with disabilities gun visible accommodations or other disability barriers that they may have experienced, and clear access, um, civil rights violations. And then I also worked on um, cultural and accessibility of Chicago's museums, theaters, and outdoor spaces. So that's just a little bit of a snapshot. I'm um, a deaf person. I was born deaf, and um, now I, I feel like that real quickly appears. 
a naive due to the miracle saline crunch. Your naive is saline crunch turbinate or capsule. So I'm very grateful to other power service providers. And they know that uh, the pandemic has not been easy for our service providers to win as we develop new standards and expectations you know, in competency and virtual platforms. So um, I'm a PD, you may know, I want to make sure everybody knows our location. So uh, we have two office location. One is in City Hall, um, is uh, right here. And City Hall is really a beautiful project. There's so much history and so much that happens here. But just as it could not uh, we have a um, field office location. Uh, which is at 2102 West Acton, which you, you, know, you may have gone to uh, events in the past. And I hope you continue to, to go to events. We call it the um, field office, and I think that's what the disability community does too, but I'm going to share this, um, that if you come to the building, you will see a new sign. And the name of the building is the Central West Community Center. It used to be called, there used to be an outdoor sign there that was there for uh, many, many years. And um, we looked into the history in the building. It was dedicated by Mayor Washington. The building was dedicated by Mayor Washington in 1987. He, he had this great vision, um, building a space that would be open and available to anyone in, this, in Chicago and the surrounding neighborhood. It's somehow over time that he, the building had changed to um, be just the names of the deployments, the names of the services. So we thought that uh, when I came across that, I thought that was just a really beautiful spin to break back to the building. So when you drive by, this is an Acton. Um, you will see this sign, the Seattle West Community Center. And that's also when I think about the disability community, we are a community, we really come together and that's the vision of what we want to be building here that we continue to be built it here. So I have a few um, announcements to share. So um, yesterday we announced the 32nd anniversary of the Americas with Disabilities Act. And I think it's so important to honor all of the work that has been done, but be clear to that without also equally saying, we have more work to do. We have more to continue to realize the promise of the ADA. If we're in the area that we have yet to make significant advances, is it the area of disability employment? Um, for example, the students ensure that 19% of people with disabilities are employed versus 64% of people without disabilities. And I spent a lot of time thinking about why. I think that there are a lot of assumptions about what people with disabilities are capable of. I think there are some um, assumptions about the high, the cost of feasible accommodation and that the cost of feasible accommodations is very high. Um, when it back, uh, many accommodations that people with disabilities ask for um, uh, violence. I mean, there are the students that said that the average cost is about $500 in the Dictapia is by disability, but many times the type of accommodation the person is asking for is something that could be easily provided or, Medifying. Uh, but there is still that assumption. And then I also want us to be honest, I think there is a bias against people with disability. For example, as a deaf person, I have a deaf accent. And I know that uh, there are some people out there that when they hear the way they may talk, they have updated about the bias based on expectations of what people should sound like or may affect the way that they interact with me in happens all the time, really. So I that um, manifest between many different types of disabilities and bias. And then um, I was also um, watching very closely the impact, the impact of the pandemic on our job market. So um, during the pandemic, which is this ongoing pandemic, we have seen the job market for the wider but with more jobs available that there are people to hire for those jobs. 
And I was getting phone calls from companies saying, we would love to hire people with disabilities. We don't know where to find people with disabilities. We don't know what we need to do um, in our hiring practice. And so those two things helped me to realize what it needs for them. And then I also have um, two staff members, Eric Lopez and Chasson from Masato, who have been um, an MOPD for two decades. They provide benefits counseling. They said, over the years, what the equipment has listed, the highest number of phone calls um, has been, can you help me find a job? And so with that, um, I am so, um, and that tells me what that need is. Um, we also know that, um, we also know that people with disabilities have a lot to offer, that um, there is an untapped pipeline and opportunity here to be the um, clean opportunities. Um, and I think that companies are starting to see that. Um, so here, I'm gonna jump to this announcement. Um, so with that, we wanted to come up with a solution and I'm so excited to share that with you, but I'm not gonna do it myself. I'm going to stop sharing so that uh, Nina, who is on my team, can um, share a video. So I'm gonna stop sharing and I'll have Nina share the video. Hello everyone, I'm Mayor Lori Lightfoot, and today I'm proud to honor the 32nd anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA. Each year on July 26, we reflect on how our city has become more accessible to Chicagoans with disabilities, as well as the work we have ahead of us. When it comes to employing people with disabilities, for example, we have more work to do. That's why this year, I'm excited to share that under my leadership, the city of Chicago is making an investment in disability employment. To kick this off, today, the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities Commissioner, Rachel Arfa, and I are launching the MOPD Career Center. The MOPD Career Center will provide citywide assistance to job seekers with disabilities helping them not just to find a job, but also to find a career that aligns with their interests and talents. The Career Center will also connect and work with employers who are dedicated to hiring people with disabilities, as well as create pathways to increase employment and advancement opportunities. To make an appointment with the Career Center, please email MOPD Career Center at cityofchicago.org. That's MOPD Career Center at cityofchicago.org. Or call 312-746-5773. That's 312-746-5773. Or visit the MOPD field office at 2102 West Ogden. Supporting residents with disabilities is an important priority to me on a personal level. My father lost his hearing in his early 20s after a lengthy illness. I saw firsthand the bias he experienced while trying to secure a job and the impact it had as a ripple effect throughout my family and my life. If resources like the Career Center were available during his lifetime, I would think and hope his life and our family's life could have been very different. I have also personally heard from so many Chicagoans with disabilities about their own barriers to gaining employment. So the MOPD Career Center is an important step forward in breaking down those barriers and reinforces the need to work together to eliminate the challenges facing residents with disabilities. So today, on the 32nd anniversary of the ADA, let's celebrate our city's important work and progress in making the city of Chicago the most accessible city in the nation. Thank you very much.
So um, that was the peak notch yesterday. And um, we are so absolutely thrilled to be able to um, open the Korean Center into work with so many Baba Ipnoima partners across the city to help more people with disabilities get jobs. Um, so, um, so I um, really urges the mayor Lightfoot like, in her commitment to increasing disability employment, you know, to access citywide. I cannot do any of the work that I do without her. It is so important to have that support from the top, from the leader of every work, from any work position. And that's absolutely what my experience here as commissioner is. So I'm going to share my screen again. So um, here we are going to introduce you to our career center staff. So these are the people who um, are going to be working with our job seekers with disability. And first I will put down you know, and trusted in who have been in Amakriti for two decades. And I got to know them before I ever came to the city because one of my roles in equal clean quality was to manage the program for uh, protection and advocacy for benefits of um, social security in um, Hannah Walsh, um, an equal clean quality now for us, not program. But through um, that role, I got to see the work that you know, Erica Chasselin do. And um, when I came out, I heard from so many experts across the state. And, the country about um the about the both of them being some of the best the best experts and providing guidance to people with disability to receive benefits and want to work and have to maintain those benefits. So trusting it is out the way um, at the right you know black effort in New York is right in the center of the photo. Everybody else is new. So next to Eric in a um, short blue point class is Luan Huberman, who is our program director. But Luan joined us in March. Um, she brings a lot of experience in teaching, um, running adult um, educational programs to senior colleges here from the other district office. So she really came up with an, um, so much of the strategic experience that we need. And then the remaining for our career placement counseling in here this uni, anytime you hire for a room, you have to look up one. Some of those turnouts are, and if that turnout is available, uh, but for here, there was no turnout that's then um, career placement counseling. So we work with the Department of Human Resources to create a brand new turnout. So the four people here are uh, the first people ever in the city to be work with the world of career placement counselors. Yet they are out working on serving people with disabilities who run a fine job. So I'm going to start with Cody all the way at the end, who's very good at to us. And then Johanna, who's very good at sharing with the Black Pill. And then Jihan, who's very good at our son in three pins. And then we have Will at the other end, who's very good at sharing. Um, black peers and they all come from different um, work issues. Um, they bring so much experience. Your work comes to us from um, having, after having been at Threshold for a long time. And then um, Carly um, came to us from the night house. And then um, Johanna came to us from um, a lot of the employment network. And Johanna came to us from National Lewis University. So we are really able to cover a wide range. And a lot of them started in early July. So um, I am so thrilled to have these um, experiences to be able to send Prima. Yesterday we launched and it was our first day. It be yesterday we already had 11 clients, which is phenomenal for a brand new program at large. So I know that it's really gonna go up from here. And I want another group for people who watch up to be able to access those opportunities, but not to chat, but meaningful career opportunities, including advancement. So many times we hear about people with disabilities who were at the same job for a long time without the opportunity to be a um, promoter or to be a manager. Um, so we really wanna be able to work and increase all of those pathways. 
Um, I also want to acknowledge someone who's not in this, um, who is um, Christina McLean, who's the deputy commissioner. Um, she's been in MPD for uh, eight years, and um, she's overseeing this program. And Christina and I work very closely. Uh, this in, um, Christina um, has a master's in human resources, and so she really comes with the perfect experience. Plus, she used to be a premier policeman at the White House also. So um, I'm so lucky to have Christina to be leading on uh, this tour. Yeah, I'm Christina here. So um, who will be some of um, Sydney and Chicago residents, uh, people who identify and have a participatory, and um, who are looking for a job, a job training program, a pathway. We will be able to kind of space and able to do um, have a computer station um, if we develop a job seekers when accessible and adaptive technology is needed. We want it to be intentional about working to address the digital divine for people who may not have access to computers, but also um, may not have access to any accessibility they need. So we better be able to have that available. Um, so how do you can help here? So, here's some options for super colors. The blue number three, one, two, seven, four, six, five, seven, seven, three. And then you select option three, if you want, um, there's a sub menu there. So the first option out of there will take you to the career center. If you want, I believe option number two out of that will um, send you to um, whatever is possible. So um, if you call, I hope you'll be able to reach us very easily. easily. You can also email us at MOPD Career Center at cityofchicago.org. It will be able to meet with people um, by phone or by virtual meetings, for example, as Zoom or MS Teams. Right, there's another video platform that's permitted. Right now, we have limited in person appointments, but if that is needed or purpose, we will accommodate that. We also contact two workers in, who could come into um, either of our locations. We are working on a new office space, which will be built down at the South of West Community Center. And um, we are in working on um, the construction process um, in hopes to have a program and turn companies um, a large in October of this piece. And I would let everybody know about that. We also want to make sure that we are in the communities, especially um, historically at the certain communities at the south of West Side of Chicago. So we are looking at uh, making sure that we have outreach locations, the urban people in Sydney College, to um, reach out to students with disabilities through uh, Sydney colleges. Um, and also having outreach locations in Chicago public, public libraries. Um, in all of that is, um, all of that is in progress if we will continue to develop that. Um, it's really day two. <laughs> um, so it, in addition to for people with employers, uh, with job seekers with disabilities, we also want to work with employers. As I mentioned before, companies were calling me to say, we want to hire people with disabilities, how do we find them? So we are proactively working with employers and include some hiring practices. And we want to um, develop new career pathways for uh, people with disabilities. Um, so we're a really clean example of our work is um, we launched a metric program with Microsoft Inspiring Chicago along with our research partner, West University. And through this program, we connected um, people who were interested in the IT field um, who um, Aspire helped us to find they were a fantastic partner. Um, we, we matched them with um, if you are using Microsoft, many who are, have who have been do not have disabilities. Yeah, that we also partner up with Rush University Medical Center so that we could develop the best practices and, and um, um, for, um, um, best practices with mentoring. If we think that really surprised me that um, is that there's a huge research gap on um, mentoring, the impact of mentoring on people with disabilities. And I take this so personally because. Um, 
So I would grateful to have so many mentors in my career who um, made such an impact that um, where I am today. And after times you need a mentor to help um, encourage you or to push you out of the comfort zone. And I hope that everybody at this meeting today has a mentor who um, they could go to them out of that. So I want to make sure that people with disabilities have that opportunity. Um, so also we will provide um, the employers one of one consultation and identify what kind of jobs people have available, the companies have, you know, job, what their needs are, work with them at that. We will provide training for any supports, um, for example, disability awareness training, and they will also um, go outside and kind of send someone it looks like. And then um, work on processes where we'll be with companies and available jobs. Um, so another thing that um, we are offering through the Korea Center is um, benefits counseling, which I mentioned here, which I said, provide, um, is so if that's available to anyone who comes to the Korea Center, if we really wanted to take an holistic approach to this by um, making sure that people have all the tools they need and all the information they need. Um, I've really, so that is um, another service that we have. And um, many of you actually want to take a moment to thank the community. Um, many of you were so helpful last year. Um, we found out that um, we put MMPD has got the grant from the Social Security Administration, um, which is a five year grant. And last summer we applied for another five years. And we were devastated to know that we did not get out and in appearance that there were. Um, there was a restructuring of that grant and he went to another position in the area. Um, in the meantime, I really valued um, the services that the Anchor Justin provides, so we wanted to keep them in as part of our department. If we are, yeah, so they have been we have continuing to serve people with disabilities here, and we are still hearing that people are still coming to us and not to the position that actually can the contract, and I, I reach out to so many organizations that is called to ask for your support, and many, so many of these signed letters of support, we really appreciate that, um, your support. Um, so we still have the service, and this is not funded by the Social Security Administration anymore, um, but that grant becomes a free work, and four years from now, we will absolutely be apply for that, but in the meantime, it's written through the city, and it's Again, a priority. And um, after time for their different um, income of the person must not become a being the book, for example, through CPS, we filled out those calls. It was received hundreds of calls, for example, from CPS families who wanted to know what the impact of that being person would be. So that's another way that better was calls you could be really helpful. Um, and talked about um, Mentally, you can hear the link to the press release about that that we released in February. Um, after this mini camera, I'm um, sent me a um, um, we'll document with other different leaks so then you don't have to cope through the PowerPoint if you're to. Um, so another thing that I'm very um, excited to share is that um, here at the city of Chicago, we run the events in employees with disabilities, including um, great practices for employees with disabilities. So in January of this year, uh, the city of Chicago launched a very first employee resource group. And that group is focused on disability. You typically see employee resource groups in uh, many companies across the city. If what it is, is a group that is made up of people with the same affinity or identity. So I was, um, was launched in January, and the group came up with a name themselves, which is called Disability Group of Chicago. And um, I would love um, to share, show a video about the launch, so I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to have Nina Shea put up the video. And um, I'm going to ask the YouTuber to just stay as Lena. Because um, that would just not have the YouTube issue built, but there are captions at that video. I'm Cesar Rodriguez. Welcome to another edition of Inside Chicago. 
The mayor's office drives on building a working culture of inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility. And today we're going to introduce you to one city employee who embodies the values of how Chicago works. Hi, um, would you and son work? Peg White answers calls in her office. She works on her computer. It's business as usual. She's passionate about her role as an analyst for human resources at City Hall. We're doing some mobility training to help out with the change to more limited sight, not being able to see. So she's retraining me on some of the basics using a cane and getting around City Hall. It's my office. It's quite different with limited sight. It seems like nothing can stop this 20-year veteran. Not even her visual and auditory disabilities. Some individuals might complain about going to work and they have the ability to hear, the ability to see, to move. But in your situation, that's not the case. What pushes you to come to work every day? It was the way I was raised. And Peg is not alone. There are many employees with disabilities who play an integral part of our team, like Commissioner Rachel Arfa, who heads the Office for People with Disabilities. When I was 18 months old, my hearing loss was diagnosed by a doctor who told my parents, your daughter is dead. She's never going to be able to talk. She's not, never going to be able to communicate or walk or have a normal life. Commissioner Arfa is working with the mayor's office to make sure city employees with disabilities are represented. And it starts with employee resource groups, or ERGs, that gathers individuals with common goals or interests. Among the first truly successful ERGs happened in the early 1970s, uh, and they were started by black employees who were finding themselves in circumstances where they wanted to be more involved in the success of the business but didn't find easy pathways. The city's chief diversity officer, Marcus Miller, is also leading this important initiative. He tells us the city has launched ERG pilot programs for people with disabilities and veterans. These groups not only help develop a cultural awareness in the workplace, but improve the services provided to residents. Over time, these ERGs, as we call them, would be successful at committing the city to new ways of delivering services, providing uh, greater opportunities for um, our communities to participate in city uh, activities. Commissioner Arfa is the executive sponsor, an inaugural first member of the city's first of its kind ERGs. People with disabilities have different skills and perspectives that are an asset to their workplaces. So we want to celebrate and encourage and honor those identities. As for Peg, she hopes that ERGs will fill a void that she's never experienced during her two decades as a city employee. I'm looking for an opportunity to learn more about life everywhere and, you know what I mean, just your way of being with other people. If you're interested in learning more about ERGs, send an email to employee resource groups at cityofchicago.org. For Inside Chicago, I'm Cesar Rodriguez. Um, so that was, um, was another green snapshot, and um, so I served as the, um, some of the, uh, as I serve as the executive sponsor of this, and I'm so proud to really be um, supporting this. Um, we also have my mother who signed a video about two weeks ago, he left for the Obama Foundation, but he was the chief diversity officer, and he was a really big supporter of uh, all of these disability initiatives, and then we also worked with the Department of Human Resources as well. Um, so um, in this city policy is also support uh, participation in the ERG, um, city employee could use um, two hours of staff time to participate. And if you are a leader of the ERG, you can um, use up to three hours of time per month. And then we're continuing to explain this, but this is a pilot that will determine the matter for any other affinity groups or ERGs to come. 
you know, because you really are a powerful message to be stolen for disability. Um, I'm going to go back to um, share my screen again. So um, I have a couple more announcements. So um, at the Center of West uh, Community Center, we are adding a mural to the side of the building at the Acton side, and it's going to cover uh, a large portion of that wall. And what we are doing is uh, we were, I, that is we were so important to really and to the near them in the visual representation of what it means to have a disability here in the city of Chicago. And so this is the partnership with the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. Um, Commissioner Harvey has been a phenomenal supporter in the world of working with the Department of Family and Support Services because they have a senior citizen regional program there. Um, and in this picture, you see the artist Sam Cook, who is painting at another moon. If you Google Sam Cook, you will see many you probably seen many of her the most across our city. So it was such an honor to be working with Sam. We also um, wanted to make sure that we can disability community feedback as part of that. And so uh, many of you have joined some of those sessions. So we really appreciate uh, the viewer uh, feedback at that. And that that is um, scheduled to be completed in October. And I'm really excited about that. Um, we, and I do have one question. Um, I'm going to go back to this line. We met what has come up with the community engagement groups is making sure that we honor Chicagoans with disabilities who have made an impact in our, in our city. So I will ask this question and again at the end, but I want to share now to give you some time to think about it for the rest of the session. Um, I would love you to think about someone with a disability in Chicago who has made an impact, a two names, and then persistently come up. And I think we can either be at a first Susan Nussbaum, who passed away several months ago. And um, she was a writer, a playwright, an artist, an activist. Uh, you may have seen her in a group of these videos about working to make the city more accessible. So um, that's one person that has really come up to um, assume to some whose legacy we want to honor and that she was also such a mentor for other women with disabilities. And she really helped her peer women with disabilities with one another. And I know that she ran that program on a practice living with that really being in the pack that so many women with disabilities. The other person that has come up is Marco Bristol, who passed away um, two years ago and um, who was the board of um, Access Living and a very strong, very powerful disability based African in Chicago. You can look out over the city and see her pack. We are looking for um, some other nominations. So I would love to get your ideas on anybody that we may not be thinking of. Um, um, another person that I was thinking about and I would love to throw in a view for that is um, Major Irwin, who does not have a Chicago connection, but um, he was um, extremely working with the efforts to um, pass the Americas with Disabilities Act. But as a Black man, she's not recognized in those efforts. Um, so that could be another way to help tell that story, a true story about the passage of the ADA. I just wanted to throw that out there. But I find you um, putting in the chat um, any ideas or we'll email me afterwards. We'll, um share that at the end, after the end of this presentation. But I would love to take this moment to really get your thoughts on who could be at, who wants to be, to be Anna at this moment. So thank you for um, thinking about that. You'll be one to honor our disability history is so important to know our history as we both will be about the future to look like. We have to know the history and the disability rights movement and the activism that has led to so many, so many of the changes that we have to make.
I'm so I have a second initiative that we um we announced uh, through the Department of Culture and Field, the Special Events and Covid here in Hierarchy, is that we are a clinic and enters in this program here in our Central West Community Center. If you would love to have an artist with interdisciplinary um those applications closed. Um Maybe I believe um, so. We will be evaluating the application. If there was some information session, the information was shared very widely. So um, if that um, opportunity was one hundred fifty percent by the National Endowment for the Arts, and then uh, the city is funding the other fifty percent. And so I'm very excited to see what those applicants will be. It helps support the arts, especially sharing disability, celebrating disability through the arts. So now um, I'm gonna change to the little bit and talk a little bit more about our um, services. And some of you may know about some of these services, others, this may be new information. I mean, I do see a question in the chat for more and more about our um, career services, if rather somebody who goes to do us can also come to the career center. As you know, I mean, I did do you know, um, but I, that was actually what about our very first question. We, we started working with it. And we had um, a number of meetings with um, Ronnie Patrick and the doers, and um, we determined that people can go to us, but they can also come to us. So we can send people to both. There's no one or the other. And um, we can share more information about that, but I wanted to clear that up for people. But it was is actually one of the very first questions that we really wanted to know as we build, as we prepare the process. So I'm a PD service, and so um, we have a number of services, including um, a frontline staff who provide information and refer the people who call us for information. We also provide personal assistance services, which provide up to six hours of help in the home for a person with a disability. Duras has a very much larger program where they're able to provide more hours, but we find that um, these words are up for people who may not qualify for to our services. We are many just um, a few hours, so uh, we um, make sure that after I came here, we updated the language of this program. It used to be called homemaker services, but um, we updated the information to um, just the personal assistant uh, because that's what the person does. You know, um, I really believe strongly that the person with a disability is the one who is in charge of their own home. And the person who comes in is the person in the assistance is the one who provides assistance to that person. And I wanted to make sure that that equal to terminology really reflects and that philosophy of doing whenever we can to help people with disabilities them independently in our communities. Um, so that we can also um, connect the people with me on the food option. Um, typically, that is an apprenticeship with me on self but we have uh, we have some other um, expanded the options of the people so the people could choose from those options, including people who have specific dietary needs. Where people who may want prefer a box of produce, a fresh fruit, a budget vegetable to be delivered to their home. So we have some conversations in the works at that, but I think it is so important to be able to provide options so that people can make their own choices in each meal service program has different pros and cons. You know, we should all be able to choose from a menu of options. Um, we heard about the career center. Um, so we have um, home modification service and uh, we are we could go into your home and make it more accessible and I'll show you some pictures in a few minutes. Um, we have an accessibility compliance unit. We have um, the public policy um, to a person who's new and to learn who is at this quality. We also have um, a disability awareness training that we can provide in. And then we also provide training on substance so professional program to find how to be students. And another service that we have is um, providing if the buying or capture foods to people who are tough and hard of hearing through the ITAC program. And those are free in charge. They're available to any age. Yeah, they're a great way for people who may need or want to be able to be in front of the captions or seeing on the phone. We are meaning amplification. Again, they're free. It doesn't matter if you live in the city or not. And there are several ITAC 
um, stations around the state to so definitely take advantage of that if you're able to. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about an disability resource unit, which um, provides information for a um, person with assistive home delivery meals and assistive technology. We also provide an assistive technology through a delegate agency contract with access the week, so access the week staff um, will uh, provide those services. So home modification, um, so we really focus on um, Interests to homes, uh, for example, adding a them to a web. And but we also do, for example, making your kitchen more accessible, or making your bathroom more accessible. And during the pandemic, we had to pivot because people were not comfortable when someone coming into their homes. And there was just so much that we didn't know about COVID in those early days. Um, so what we did in stand was uh, when we were able to do construction now starting, you know, in the course, you have to think about Chicago, you can do construction outdoors with the virus person and with the snow. So what we the conditions were right, we were able to do really focus on adding ramps and things. And then once the vaccine became available, if we were able to develop um, safety protocols, we were able to go back to people's homes. But the most popular need is um, a ramp. And then this is great now, so if you want some more, we may be acquiring a disability. It needs to stay independent and is such an important tool. Um, so who can apply in Chicago Law and Conferences with Disabilities, HSU, the 59. And then both renters and homeowners can apply. It does not matter what type of housing you live in. And um, I think there's, there's a link to the application here, but we have an available in English, Spanish, and Chinese. If you can work with you, if you um, use another language, we're happy to work with you to put in them. So I'm going to show you some pictures now of uh, I'm a pretty extreme home mad makeover. So this is a picture of a bathroom that um, there is just a tub, you know, toilet um, in a bathtub. In the app, so that's the before picture. The after picture, um, the tub is gone, which means then a floor the shower was added. So that makes it um, accessible, for example, for people who use wheelchair. We um, need other types of accessibility to take a shower. In the shower head was out. Uh, um, we please so that they are here to a different option to extend them just one over her shower head and then the size and the seek was uh, reduced so then a wheelchair could go onto the seek. So that's one example of a bathroom renovation. Another example here is um, a kitchen. So with the before picture, you see um, stared on a kitchen time Characters, a cabinet, a lock, but wrong with the stove within a refrigerator next to it. So, with the after picture, you see um, an L shaped kitchen and counter. If there is now an opening under the seat, and then um, in the other part of the corner, there's also an opening so that the wheelchair can stay under the counter too. So that really makes a difference in that the, um, the stove was moved down a little bit, and that the refrigerator was moved to the other side of there. The kitchen, so it really makes it much more usable and accessible. Um, here's another example. Um, so this is the home um, of women who um, some of you may have met at the um, disability prime period on Saturday. She had a stroke, and um, she's now um, um, using um, the pretty not using a wheelchair, and um, she had experienced this to work about a year ago. If we were able to make her home accessible, so right in her in the before, she um to has steered happily steered her scurrica to her home. And then after in the after picture, you see the steer temping, we burned using wood. And then um, there is now a nymph that goes up to the um level of the house. So now she can um, come in and out of her house. And um, that's another example of how we just don't expect um, disability can happen in, to anyone in any time, but through the home modification program, we're able to um, allow this family, this family can continue to live with their home independently. Here's another example. So this is a um, stairs to the um, house. But um, in the after picture, you can see that there is a ramp that is built on the octave front. Young, um, to allow the person to come into the house. The stairs are still there, but now there's a ramp to be able to get them. 
So that's another example of what this program provides. And uh, there is a misconception about this program that you can only apply in a certain time. We take applications all year round. The wording that um, has to be bad is that it takes time to get a permit and it takes time to line up the construction purpose. If we um, have got like an agency to uh, be assigned to others to, um, in, in exchange for to, 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 to do the work, um, so that is where the planning, that's where um, the planning process needs to um, take time and apply in any time. And something that people may not know is that you can apply once per calendar year. So you can apply one year and have one type of modification, and then you can apply again the following year. So if that's something that maybe you need, um, you should feel free to do that. So that's a little too free. Um, so our accessibility compliance unit so is overseen by our um, deputy commissioner of um, accessibility and compliance, uh, Tom, who is in Uncontact, and she brings so much experience to this room. Um, so we um, go out and do same inspection. We provide advice on compliance and technical assistance and um, different accessibility requirements of our physical access. And then we also have a pre-permit review process where uh, we will review the permits, we will review the players before the permit process and provide guidance at that, um, the, the accessibility requirements needed. And then we also work closely with the Department of Buildings too. Um, the one um, other thing that we do is um, what we found was that we could do all these um, pre permit reviews, but then there was nobody to really check and make sure that that accessibility got built. We saw that that was a gap in those services. Um, so for me to run, okay, we created a brand new title here in the city last year, and it called them an accessibility inspector. Um, if that person, that person's responsibilities are to go out to the site as in the construction stage, multiple times to make sure that the accessibility need and see those plans. Um, that was drawn up, it's actually being built. So we want to make sure that when people see they could make different um, requirements accessible, they actually go in and do that. You know, um, we have two fantastic accessibility structures in the, at that team that we also have another ankle text, you know, um, two other um, projects working in the room um, and the whole team just works so smoothly together. So we really experienced that. So they will go out to different uh, buildings and um, Developments to make sure that uh, the accessibility that was in the plans is built. I mean, then I'm um, going to when um, oversees our public policy, including any legislative priorities and um, accessibility in um, any um, accessibility in many different areas. I mean, just almost every issue has an accessibility component. It would be the area that we done a lot of work on is accessibility. In um, emergency preparedness, it makes sure that plans are being developed for uh, people with disabilities and all different types of weather disaster related incidents, which I hope that we don't have. But if we do, we work very closely with um, the Office of Emergency Management and all of that to make sure that there is specific information. And we've seen even over the past year that um, the ways work to expand that the branch. And we're also seeing that um, by and from the different departments and recognize they could work with us to expand what those needs are. We also work on accessible transportation options. Um, pedestrian access to safety for people with disabilities. Um, so we uh, have a presentation at the city's labor and economic policy working group um, and at our, our uh, food equity council. You might have seen an announcement from me a few months ago about to make the food equity council so then anybody can have access to food access to the city and that they could specifically include food needs, it's a car, adults with disabilities and making sure that we take one of the steps we care to make sure that adults with disabilities who need access to food are able to do that. Um, we also work with the mayor's office very closely um, on gender-based violence and um, human trafficking issues. Um, we know that 
for example, the Czech base by by and as we know the people with disabilities uh Mark the communities that are disproportionately impacted by gender based violence. And we want to make sure that all the bar programs are accessible for people with disabilities. We have some really great partners that we are working with at that. Um, we also make sure that um, our um, um, emergency preparedness um, knows how to communicate with people with disabilities. Um, another issue that it might be. Um, Logic boys um, have a name to basic ones around accessible transportation. So I'm a pretty book very closely even the Chicago Department of Transportation and Divi, who's the provider of um, basic on um, and adapt them basic as part of the bike sharing program. And um, see that it was doing a series um, the adaptive basic bike session to our riders with disabilities and um, explaining the features of the bike and providing information. Um, and people can also try and tear the bike and he has saying because it would become the bike. So we have um, some days in our video map, but we I'd also share them out to us. So every session will be held from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the bar the week of committees. So when so every time from 10 in the morning to 12 noon, and I would love to see you go out there and test it out if you would love to hear feedback. So please share any feedback that you may have. Um, so the next one is on Arcus Ford and Matt Rose Harbor. Another one is after that is Arcus 25th and Mankind Park. Another one is September 1st and Douglas Park. And then September 29th, 30th, 29th, 31st Street Beach um, at the Lake Front Trail, and then October 18th, back on Mercon Park. So we um, are sure that information would be on to circulate with everybody, but we would love to kind of experience it. And, um, even if you're not a person with a disability, you would be great to test it out just to get more awareness about this option that's available. So anybody could use the bank. Um, we've also been very active with working on um, the screeners. Um, and, we are representing MLPD um, at the screener program. Yeah, so we really take the feedback from the disability community to really work to make modification. For example, we heard from the blind and official community that um, there was no way to complain if you came across a screener because the text was not accessible. So our brain was added as what we need to be able to enter the which could in and then um, be able to make a complaint. Um, with that, and then also please print the um, screener and have a um, black tube requirements. If the key should be left in the middle of the sidewalk because that would clean the barrier. Um, if I present about screeners are required to be seated. And I suspect that uh, not just when people with disabilities who could benefit, but people that without disabilities may prefer to be exceeding. So I wonder if this is going to be something where um, it, people with disabilities will be the early adapter, and then other people may decide they will prefer to sit down with their writing a scooter. We will see. Um, and then out of the scooter, the companies are required to work with us to develop a shared accessible scooter program. And we will be meeting with the companies over the next few months. We are also um, a part of the Google program, and I know that there are many disability representatives who uh, were a part of that too. I know that access to the disability lead and representation at the Pantheon Ridge World released a couple of weeks ago, and I know there were many others who shared their feedback. Um, and then, of course, there's a big focus on equitable spheres and world and development, uh, which was passed by Zuni Council on July 20th. And it really, really um, takes a um, really accessible needs, a really big point of that. It will also have the selection committee for the 10 pilot programs to. Um, so, we think that that would really increase accessibility, clearly, um, you know, across the board and in, in other power communities. 
um, you know, the, the, the people may not know is that um, if you apply for an uh, accessible quality permit, you are denied. You, um, so the application is through the Department of Finance, but if you are denied, you have an appeal right to um, the mayor's office for people with disabilities. And uh, we added an email address if you want to appeal that. You know, my staff member um, here uh, will review that and uh, make a determination, and then it's sent back to the, the Department of Finance. Um, ultimate and the ability to override our decision, but that's part of the process. And um, we have really tightened up the time and response for that. We used to take um, about two months to firm response, but now um, due to um, the diligence of our um, you know, and my team, um, that process is now down to um, a response within 24 hours. If that's a huge efficiency right there. And now it's a weekly, but the email that has really created more efficiencies. But these but, um, people think they should call here you know, about the decision, but really they should call the Department of Finance because the Department of Finance really makes the final, they will give you the final decision, but that's another option that's available for people who live in the city. So we have some information at that, and, um, either by me or email. Um, I've shared about ITAC phone. Um, so some other announcements before I end. Um, we are co-sponsoring a Kanhaye event with the Social Security Administration on August 2nd. Um, we have partnered with Social Security last year. We are the Khan, um, based on the information that should be had, the only people got jobs. So we're hoping that more people may be, um, if that's something you're interested in, we have an information session of being able on ARCA Circuit. If there are this link that you need to register, and it's on ARCA Circuit from 1 to 2 30 p.m., and it's available to anybody who's looking for a job. Uh, we have um, some jobs available too. I would love to see anybody here who wants to join the team apply to our jobs. We've had quite a hiring spree and um, we will continue. So this role I'm really, really excited about is a digital accessibility special and community engagement. Um, you know, that's the focus of what the Bureau Montana is information coordinator, but that is the focus of this room, which is the digital accessibility specialism, community engagement. So we want someone who um, will be working on making sure that our um, materials are accessible for people with disabilities, but that we're also looking for someone to be employed for our community engagement work. So um, I, the salary is 67944 and our application is in 2022, you can go to um, the city of Chicago, Department of Human Resources, um, in the corner job. Um, I said that I'm going to put it on this Arcus Eve. Another job that we have is we are the people who uh, are program director for our disability resource unit, which would oversee, supervise our frontline staff, maybe account intake and some of the organization um, that you may be working at. Uh, but I I got to work with um, any group of equality. I really got to work with uh, Mari Matteo, who was the, who's the take manager, and I just know that um, she does such a fantastic job in making sure that all um, everybody making sure that um, somebody could different request through a so, you know, that's what it makes this good. And I'm looking for someone who could really manage that and take process. Yeah, this is the frequency that occurred. It will be supervising that team. And it's a really great way to build um, how we um, sh share the mission with people who come. So I'm really excited about that. Again, that um, is up in 2022. And it will be supervising a small team and um, making sure we're compliance with federal grants that we receive and connect to Chicago with disability. There's so many of these really important services. I think the frontline staff are um, often not appreciate and into some of the hurdles work about in um, the yeah, SAT so calls for people in helping to connect people with services that will help them.
in a clear center service, you may never run it to say, no, you have to come back another time, but when we haven't, we'll be getting the interpreter. Um, so I wanted to really be very proactive about them. So we included in our request um, the funding for signing French interpreter in yeah, that application. Then um, job is available. I'm um, really close to our husband. I forgot to put in here. But that's um, another position we will have on staff. And I think that's really important. Um, so um, I'm gonna close on here. Um, I hope this will be really great. And I look forward to hearing good feedback from him. And I'm gonna close on here with the question. Um, if there's anybody that um, you think that we should honor as part of a more who run us some Chicago roads with disability who have meaning and impact, that they could be, they can't have passed, that they could be. And I have um, I would have any in our ideas, and I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen in a minute. So here's my information. Please reach out to me and email me with um, any questions or information you need, and I will make sure that we're able to connect you with um, what you need. And um, it's been so great to be here with Mark, so many friends, and so many people in our community, and I should really thank everybody here. Um, thank you so much, Barry, for um, hosting me today for other work. Thanks very much, Rachel. Um, we do have a little time for a couple of questions. Um, so um, I know you answered the question already about the interface of the Career Center and DRS. Another question about um, the Career Center is uh, the age range will be served. For instance, can a 16-year-old use this service? Is there a cutoff for age range? Um, I think it's does and 16, it might be 18. Um, I will um, I will double check at that. And I know that we are said there was some debate. Great. So um, as Rachel mentioned during the session, she's going to provide us with a, a resource list after the session. And maybe we can include that when you provide the information about the Career Center, uh, if there are any uh, age limits. Um, and um, speaking of age limits, when you were talking about the, um, the home modification, um, somebody asked, they thought that you uh, said something that goes up until people who are age 59 and people wanted to know if that's a limit and if so, what happens to people who are over 59? Um, I know that sounds like a very arbitrary number of interviews in this room because it's based on our funding resources. Uh, I, I'm sorry, it's uh, based at the Bundy the weekend uh, because the, um, the, um, the, the Bundy stops um, in each 59, uh, some of the grant in Fenno Bundy the weekend, but um, feel free to contact us if we're happy to put you in touch for uh, anybody who's um, over, who's 16, over who may need um, her modification, we're happy to connect you with that because there are any programs here. Great. And then we have a question uh, about uh, service relief areas. Would MOPD work with someone as far as issues of service relief? She, one person specifically talked about the route from Union Station to Roosevelt, and she's having a hard time finding a place to relieve for her service animal to relieve itself. Um, I'm, I'm feel free to reach out to me about the specific areas, and um, I'm happy to know more about that. Great. Um, I wish you then I'm for service relief. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to make sure that people know that oh, here yeah, which we have service animal relief. Yeah, yeah. So we work very closely with Commission of and the Department of Aviation and all of that. And that they also have um, a, um, they also have a um, changing species. Yeah, yeah. And um, the airport too. Great. Um, you had mentioned the emergency preparedness. Um, work and somebody asked if there's anything recently they've been working on.
We can't hear you, Rachel. We can't. We can't hear you. Um, one of the points that we put to it is that very recent and one of the top of policy changes that we've been mentioning um, over the last few weeks to really um, obtain and expand the service and, for example, uh, providing effective communication over that looks like for people who are deaf and hard of hearing, people who are blind and no vision, people who have um, intellectual development disabilities, and people who um, have different uh, physical needs and making sure that um, they are different um, communication access needs and, um, and even also how to think about them. Any emergency preparedness needs around someone who has a personal assistant who are people who have um, a service animal um, to make sure that other staff are trained and um, on the band um, and making sure that we provide that assistance. Um, for example, if somebody has a mobility disability, making sure to have civic areas near clinic lines for people who have trouble static, um, making sure that there are clear walkways with no obstacle or triple castle, um, making sure that inaccessible addresses or bathrooms are easy to find in the print materials, uh, make materials available, and um, a variety of ways, for example, there's some of the Shona statue, limited mobility, can um, easily can any materials. Um, some specific examples for someone who is blind or their vision is um, so because it's a kind for uh, navigation, a unique information that may be on any materials if they're not accessible in, in another format. Um, uh, making sure that the person knows about all the different resources and access to food and clothes, and then and clothes for people who are deaf and hard of hearing, making sure their communication accent, such as in person and virtual signing, which is turbulent, capturing, ability um, to write notes, um, you need not to stand it that all deaf and hard of hearing people are communicating in different ways. And then, um, People who uh, may have limited ability to communicate in, you know, making sure the, um, the staff are able to different communication strategies and um, making sure to take the time and meet those different um, communication needs. Um, so that is um, an example, but then also making sure that there is any assistance and support for people who use personal care assistance. Um, and then MPD will also provide training. So if there's any emergency or sure need or training on disability awareness, that is another service that we can provide here. So I hope that answers that question. Great. Um, Hugh Woodson wanted to let you know that he appreciated your presentation and also wants to reintroduce MOPD to the Chicagoland Black Deaf Advocates at a later date. So it sounds like he may be following up with you on that. Um, and then um, there's a question question of any um, upcoming MOPD events that a, the public can attend? Anything happening in August or September we should put our on our radar screen? We support the government of that previous then um, right now the city in Chicago has put an engagement session and what that means is that um, anyone, um, anybody, uh, we want the feedback from anyone and everybody in Chicago about um, what is going to the city's budget, the budget season is has started already as the people have another session this Saturday at Truman College from 10 in the morning to 12 noon. If they are signing with you, but as a beautiful, they're captioning. There's also an access table at the very um, at the entrance. So if you do need any other accessibility, please um, come and check it out. I would love to hear from you. I mean, I would love for you to help if you want whatever um, budget priorities. Uh, and I will be there on Saturday too. So uh, please feel free to come out. Um, it's a watch for that. We've already had two button sessions, one which was in Kanini Creek College, and then another one, um, I, I went Malcolm X, I believe. So um, this is such a great opportunity that if you're not able to make it um, on the Sydney's website, there's a way to share feedback. Uh, but we really need to hear from the disability community. Um, and then in October, we will have an event um, to share some of the news. Then, and, and as you got a little bit of a sneak peek of some of the announcements we will be making, and I will share all of that um, once we have more detail. But the next few months will be focused on our budget process. The budget hearings will be beginning in September. And that um, 
if anyone who is trying to talk to the city and um, during that time, um, people are very focused on the virtual because it, become, it becomes the number one focus. Um, so, but please participate via the people, people don't participate. So I hope I see some of you on Saturday. And um, I'm happy to talk to you if you've never been there and um, it help explain what that process is. And if you come on Saturday, then from 9 to 10 a.m., there's a visual sphere of authorship to facility departments. So you could walk a lot of them about other services um, in other different city departments and definitely check it out. So that's to my college, 10 a.m. to 12 noon, but the visual sphere is from 9 to 10 a.m. Thank Great. you so much, VA. Yeah, thank you. Just a couple final things. Uh, so we will be sending out the resources that Commissioner Arfa provides us. We'll also have a transcript that people have asked for the session, as well as the materials that were shared. Um, also, if you want CLE, just send me an email, barryt at equipforequality.org. Also, just wanted to let you know that we do have uh, new funding to provide training for people with disabilities about expungement of criminal records, especially around uh, marijuana or cannabis records. And then finally, I just wanted to announce that our next meeting will be Wednesday, September 28th from 9.30 to 11. And uh, we're gonna be focusing on uh, early childhood special education services. Uh, Evelyn Ahie is going to be um, our speaker. She is a attorney, uh, Equal Justice Works Fellow with the Special Education Clinic at Equip for Quality. And she has a, a project called Project Leap that focuses on early childhood special education services. And she'll be explaining the project's motivation and the model, as well as current issue trends and recent successes. So we will send out um, information about that session. If you're not on our consortium email list, you can write to me and at barryt at equipforquality.org. And I can put you on that to get information about that in future sessions. So again, thank you very much to Commissioner Arfa, I'd also like to thank our interpreter for jumping in at the last minute, doing a great job, as well as our captioner, Kathy, today for making this session accessible. Thanks, everybody, for your interest. In KBI, when we come, I just wanted to confirm the starting page for the Korean Center in 16. Great. So uh, age 16 is the starting age for the career center. Maybe that is a big focus too, but um, call the Korean Center, but we will be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you, everybody. Great. Thanks for that final information. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.